sound like we have any members of the public on the line, but does anybody have any comment on items not on the agenda? All right, seeing none. Dory, it appears you are our first person. Great, thank you. So, um, as you may recall, this uh, lot, which is lot seven at the Missoula Development Park, uh, we received a, the commission entertained an offer on it um, early in the month, and the offer came in at fifty thousand. We counter offered at seventy thousand. They have now counter to our counter at 60,000. Um, I did have some conversations with um, well Andrew Charney and then with Adam Hertz, the, the realtor. Uh, my recommendation was going to be to accept this, but Adam believes that they would go up to 62.5 and or he'll make the recommendation to them. So my recommendation to you is to counter at 62,500. That amount was uh, selected because Adam believes that even though he did agree to more, he believes that was the sort of fair amount that um, he felt was the fair amount for the property. So. That's my request to you today is 62,500 as a counter offer. It sounds like they will, um, I'm pretty confident they will accept that. And any questions? So the only question I have here, Dory, is at least on the agenda, unless I'm looking at an out of date document, it says 60,000. Right, so that's the offer. And um, so, and the last page, uh, you would select the uh, there, you're uh, signing that there's a counter offer. Okay, great, thank you. And then Annie, we had a little technology glitch with the counter offer, but I'll get I'll email that again to her and get that. So you'll sign the sixty two five. The only other change on the document was um, uh, SID. He had put that we would pay those. I don't think there's any on this property, but we won't know till we get the title report. So uh, I took that off that that we'll pay those. Dory, so so you you would recommend going with the sixty two five versus coming back by splitting the difference and saying sixty five, and then I mean I I. I always hate uh, uh, giving the uh, other party complete control over dictating the price, but. Uh. Well, I do, and then I would, and the, and Adam made an error. Adam Hurts, a realtor. So when we had the offer before, we went back and forth, as you may recall, and one of his offers was sixty-two-five. But what he accepted was 70. He thought he accepted 62.5. And so I sent him, and that's what he told his current mm -hmm. client. So, I mean, I sent him, I said, no, you accepted at 70. And I think he, he made an error before. So he has, he had previously told this current client that 62.5 he thought was the top dollar. That's why I'm coming in with a recommendation on that. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, Dory, do you, how, how badly do they want this property? Can you, I mean, I guess that's a tough question to answer, but do they seem pretty motivated? They do. Um, and there's not much, you know, if they want to be out there, that's what I thought about too. This is the only lot of this size that's small. And so it um, is reasonably priced. I mean, they don't need three acres. Um, so that's a benefit. I'm assuming they want to be at the development park. Um, but I also know we don't have anybody else in the wings interested in it, so. Um, so I guess I guess the question for me would be if if hypothetically we uh, countered with sixty five, would they just walk away? Or I mean, is it? it I don't. Yeah. Seems unlikely to me that they would. But 
I can I, I can yeah. go either way. I, I I definitely want them to work for it a little bit, uh, but uh, I um, also want to be done with it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that. And we've got and think, you know got to do my mowing contract. I mean, I have expenses coming up on it too. So if they walked away, we'd end up putting money into it. So I think, I mean, it's up to you. I. It, it seems like it's like a tough piece to, to move. That's my only concern, but I, I don't know why I think that. Uh, it's maybe it's just, how long have we had it? For, for a long time, and so that's why it's the last partial out there because um, it has a really steep slope on part of it that makes it undevelopable. I remember that. Yeah. Right. Then maybe it might be worth just getting rid of it rather than holding on to it, putting more time into it, and having to pay to mow it. Um, but unless, I mean, if you feel like you can offer them 65 and they won't just walk away, that you'll still have some back and forth, then it might be worth it. What's your... Do you feel like they'll remain in the conversation? I don't really know. I tried to feel that out from, you know, the realtor, but of course he wouldn't, he, he didn't say. Well, they haven't come back to us with anything in terms of this is, uh, this is our best and final offer to the county. No, what he said is he didn't think he could recommend more than he had offered with the idea he thought he'd offered his last uh, agreement was 62.5. So, well, sort of on him, I'm, but. Yeah, well, because of that, I guess I would feel more okay with 62.5. Uh, it, it's a little, well, I guess I'll take him at his word that that's what he thought he yeah. was offering. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll make a motion. How, how's that? Okay. I, I, I motion to request the board act on the second buy sell agreement from Peter Allison Holland <clears throat> for the sale of lot seven in the amount of $62,500. Now, uh, before I second, uh, Vicki, what do you think? <laughs> Good question. What do I think? I think you should sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go. We will dub this the Zire Memorial uh, Lot. Uh, so uh, um, I will second that. Oh, wonderful. All in favor. Aye. 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 Great. Cool. Thank you. Take, that sign take it. If not, it's back up to 65. Oh, right. No. <laughs> we just saved two grand in mowing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dory. Uh, Colleen. Good morning. Um, this is Colleen Morris, the manager of the immunization clinic over here at the health department. And today I am presenting our IAP contract, our immunization program contract with the state. It's a renewal of um, kind of a yearly order that you all sign every year. The amount that they are giving us to keep our immunization program up and running is not any different than last year. It's $45,592. Um, deliverables look identical to the last year, so it all looks doable and um, fine with me on my end. Sounds good. I would move yeah. that we authorize the chair to sign the contract or task order. <clears throat> Second. All right, all in favor. Hi. Thank Glad you. you're able to keep the same prices. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I know. I think last year we got four hundred more dollars, or I don't know, or maybe not even that. It was a small amount. Maybe it was like a hundred. This year, nothing. But we'll take it. So. Great. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks. you. All right, Cindy. Good morning. This is Cindy Kennedy with Grants and Community Programs. Uh, today, I would like to request that the board approve a deferred loan agreement in the estimated amount of $3,045 at 1% simple interest to support the cost of repairs to a property owner's water line in Lolo. 
Uh, the loan is authorized by resolutions num uh, number 2010-129 and 2016-099, and it utilizes the CDBG revolving loan fund to support water and wastewater system connection repairs for low and moderate income owners, um, low and moderate income owner occupied households. Oh, that's great. Uh, this, this is the second loan I think I've brought to you this month. And uh, currently, uh, the, you may recall we had a, uh, Idaho, Central Idaho had an earthquake March 30th. Um, it registered 6.5 on the Richter scale. And uh, apparently that caused some water lines to break in Lolo. Oh. Um, and maybe in other places too, I don't know. But uh, Jason Neese thinks that we might even get some more um, I don't know how long it takes for folks to realize their water lines are broke, so maybe we won't um, by now. But yeah, it's kind of interesting because we don't get a lot of activity with this program, and so lately we've been we've been uh, cranking out some loans. When the grass turns green and things get muddy. Yeah, Cindy, how long do these <laughs> yeah. folks have to pay off their loan? So it's deferred, and so basically what that means is that they do not have to pay it back until the um, property transfers hands, or if Great. they are no longer um, occupying the household, uh, like if they ran it out or whatever. So they do have the option to pay it back. Uh, I did have one client that sent me a check every month for a couple of years until she paid it off, but that's unusual. They usually let it sit. It's, it's a lien on their property, but it's... Mm -hmm. Not, it's a lo loosely a lien on their property. Right. So yeah, just it's... Great. Any other questions? Nope. No, thank yeah. you. Solid, thanks. Um, I, I thank you. The, uh, to request that the board approve the deferred loan agreement. Sorry. Um, thank you. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Cindy. Thank <laughs> you. So is Lolo the only place that we've seen any of this? Has anywhere else in the county been impacted by the earthquake? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, this particular loan program covers uh, other RSIDs, uh, the um, uh, Lewis and Clark and Clinton RSID, the uh, Elmar and um, Sunset West. And those are managed by um, Tammy Quinn. And I've never had a loan for any of those communities through this program. So that's the only way I would know about damage from the earthquake. Uh, there could be other other folks that experience damage that aren't part of this loan program. Right, right, I would okay. Think about that. All right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Eric, you got the next two. Uh, commissioners, can I interject briefly? I think we might have had Cameron Evans from the Missoulian join. I just want to make sure we know she's on in case there's follow-up oh, questions you. that she has. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Yep. Welcome, Cameron. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Cameron. All right, good morning. Uh, so our TSEP bridges uh, out in Frenchtown and Alberton, Alberton are, are still moving ahead. So uh, the item before you today is a notice of award. Uh, it's a little different process than we would normally have. Um, I think I may be ready uh, by next week to bring you a professional services agreement for each of these, but our engineer requested that we go ahead and get and take this step. Uh, apparently our contractors are ready to start their scheduling and order some of the materials and they were not comfortable doing that until we had this notice of award done. So uh, if if we move ahead with this now, then that gives them maybe a week's, uh, a week's head start on an official contract. But again, this is something that we um, would like to see for our, our engineer and our contractors. So uh, we did advertise bids for uh, both of these structures. They, they did not go to the same contractor, which was good. It gave us uh, the best price on each one. So uh, Dick Anderson submitted the, the lowest bid for our work on Main Street in the amount of $674,550. Uh, our, our consultant, uh, Great West Engineering, reviewed the reviewed the bid, spoke with the contractor, said it is a good and valid bid, and recommends that we execute or sign the uh, uh, notice of award for this project. Great. 
Okay, I would move that we uh, authorize the chair to sign the notice of award. Second, I must admit the first time I heard you say this, Eric, I, I thought it was a notice of a ward. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't looking at the language and I said, like, what is a ward? <laughs> this bridge is a ward of the county, so yeah. Yeah, I was waiting for something like that. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Eric. And you got another one. Yes, and then likewise with the uh, Bible Lane Bridge out in Alberton, uh, this this bridge, the low bidder was Jackson Contractor Group here in Missoula, so. Uh, their bid was reviewed by our engineer and was found to be good and valid. So we would also recommend that the notice of award be signed so that they can begin their uh, procurement process for their materials. Great. I move to um, approve that the chair signed the notice of award for a Jackson contractor group. How much is that bridge going to cost? That one is total uh, 520425 so both of both of these actually came in over the engineer's estimate, but uh, we still have our our five hundred thousand dollar TSEP grant. So we've always known that uh, we were going to spend over six hundred thousand dollars anyway uh, out of bridge fund, and we have been building the reserves for that. So uh, our budgets are fine. Good to hear, Eric. Well done. Good second. second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, Nicole. Hi, good morning. How are you? Yep, I'm here. Good. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Nicole Rush with Missoula Economic Partnership. I have uh, four items. I think the first three are uh, new grant contracts for uh, job creation grants that were awarded earlier this year. And then I have one closeout. So, um, Start off with the first one is a new contract for uh, Botany Soap. Uh, they are a soap manufacturer based out in Bonner. Uh, their award is to create six jobs. And um, just so you know, I have also, uh, for all these new contracts, I have checked in with each of the companies uh, recently, and they are willing and able to move forward with their awards. So um, Botany has actually already hired two people. So. They, are, they have not experienced any COVID related slowdown. So, or you would expect this is a good time for a soap business. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, the item, so this is three contracts the contract between the Missoula County and the state, which uh, Josh signs as chair. And then there is an assisted business agreement and grant management plan agreement um, between Missoula County and Botany Natural Soap. And they're all on the same item for approval. Okay, I would move that we uh, authorize the chair to sign the various documents related to Botany Soap. We could finally wash our hands of this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Nice job. <laughs> All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. Okay, okay so, more. yep. So the, the next item uh, is a contract for Bedrock Sandals. This is a company that MEP has talked a lot about. They are new to Missoula, um, set up operations here beginning in January. Their grant is to hire five people. And um, they have experienced a little bit of COVID related slowdown, but have gotten some good assistance from the different programs and um, are, are, they've been able to maintain the workforce they've already hired. So um, yeah, so same deal, the three contracts um, for them as well. I have no sandal or bedrock um, joke to, to offer. So um, I'm just gonna <laughs> uh, request that the board approve that to or the, the, uh, the chair signed the various documents related to um, Bedrock Sandals, and I hope they can uh, get cranking. Yeah, second. Yeah, all great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and then um, the last, last new contract set of contracts is for Consumer Direct Management Solutions. Uh, they are set to hire uh, 18 people for their job creation grant. 
Help me remind me what they do again. So they uh, they do home health uh, right. care management. They're they're in that huge they're, building, they're, right? Right. They're they're the new building out on reserve. They're, so their headquarters is here in Missoula, but they actually operate in I think sixteen different states now. Um, so they do all kinds of home home managed health service and health care. Right. Thank you. All right. I would move that we authorize the chair to sign the uh, various contract documents related to Consumer Direct. Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Nicole. Aye. And if you're rounding yep. it out. And then, yep. And then I have one more. This is a grant closeout. Um, this grant was for patient one. Um, sadly, you see that they uh, there's uh, some zeros on this closeout form. They ended up not moving forward with their hiring plan. I think they were just a little too new of a startup and it wasn't um, the right timing for them. So um, so we're closing out this grant with no no jobs created, no funds expended. So what's the, uh, I, I guess beyond this particular funding stream for them, how are they looking uh, as a business? Are they, uh, just not uh, tapping into this and, and not moving forward at all or, or what? They, they are still moving forward as a business. Um, they And they are hopeful that they'll be able to hire at some point. We've talked about potentially applying for them again. Um, I think for their product, it, um, there's it's just been difficult to get it fully um, off the ground as fast as they thought, but they do have some good new business, including from the Missoula City County Health Department, their software is being used to track uh, COVID <laughs> patients. So, and what they do is they have, um, they, it's a way for uh, physicians to um, interface with patients for patient care. So it's an app that you, you as a patient kind of log into and you get instructions through it. So like, for example, with the COVID patients, they can use it to like record their temperature. Um, and then that gets communicated to their doctor so a nurse doesn't have to call them, you know, every however many hours. So, um, so it's just, it's a new tool and I think they're still trying to figure out the right um, business model for contracting with it, whether it's with, you know, clinics or hospitals or, um, so just kind of typical startup, um, you know, challenges with them but they're still moving forward <laughs> they're not okay. closing shop <laughs> good good to hear um i i motioned that uh the chair sign um the closeout certification for patient one second great all in favor uh, hey, thanks a lot nicole, for coming by nicole before you go if there's um I'd, I'd someone reach out to me and, and they have contacts with some biotech firms in California that are hoping to move to Missoula. And who are you? Should I just have them contact you to like begin this discussion or what's the appropriate way sure. to? Sure, you can send them to me. Um, I'm happy to field those requests and yeah, be happy to talk to them. Okay. And this is that's great. Is MEP kind of the the only shop in town that does this sort of uh, kind of startup assistance or or I don't even I couldn't even answer that like where do other companies go to look for um, assistance? So no. For for startups for like entrepreneurs who are looking to start a business locally, um, a great starting point is the Blackstone Launchpad. They're actually with the University of Montana. They're kind of the startup shop in town. MEP, um, you know, we off we obviously work with startups too, but um, but I think the team at Accelerate Montana and especially the Launchpad through the University of Montana, that's kind of their wheelhouse. Um, but yeah, so but if anyone who's looking to relocate to Missoula from out of state, who's interested in Missoula, Missoula area and workforce and stuff, um, definitely uh, MEP is your contact for that. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. Thank you. Thanks.
All right, we can talk through some correspondence, this uh, thorough letter that Andrew helped us craft. I don't know if you want me to go through it for you or. Oh, I I don't know that we need to. OK, that's fine. Hash it all. Uh, certainly if uh, I don't know if uh, our friends from the media, specifically Cameron, who's on the line, has had a chance to see this, but this was our uh, response to both the governor and the governor's uh, COVID-19 CARES Act uh, relief fund task force as far as how we see Missoula County's um, financial needs looking at uh, looking like for the next uh, several months through the end of the calendar year. And I would yeah, just, that's um, definitely what I was interested in. And Cameron, the reason it's on today and we signed it earlier this week is because the rules came out late last week and comments were required by 5 p.m. on Monday. So we needed to get the commissioners to sign and send the letter prior to it being approved at an AMM meet meeting. So I just wanted to cl clearly tell you why it we signed it before an admin. OK, great, thanks. And I don't know if Vicki or, or Andrew or anyone else on the line knows. My understanding was that I was it yesterday that the task force was going to try to finalize its recommendations to the governor. It was pretty quick. So I I, I, I seem to think it was yesterday as well, Dave. I, I can't remember. It wasn't the end of the week. It was I believe it was yesterday. And, and do we know when the governor was going to then make a determination on how this would all shake down? I do not. I'm sorry. OK, that's all and right. I think it's today. The 30th that's is what I had heard from Bryce was uh, oh. Eric is when they were to okay. give their recommendation to the governor. And okay. I asked about the governor's recommendation time frame, but I didn't get an answer. Thanks. Well, you did a great job on this letter, Andrew, and I hope it uh, hope it works. Is yeah. the quote there? The quote where we're going to persevere and keep going. <laughs> well, what no, it got well. deleted. I'm so sorry. I don't know how that happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> I worked so hard on my quotes. Jeez. That was so I good. know. Was I, we've got, it was a, I think it was an editing inversion issue. I apologize, Andrew. That's all right. We'll get them next time. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was a great letter. Thank you. Oh, well, thank yeah, you. Well yep, and so timely, too. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, discussion items. We have other communication needs requests. Yeah, I just wanted job, to everyone. Good job, everyone. Last night on the town oh. hall meeting with community councils. Oh my gosh, it was such a good meeting I, and and well orchestrated, Sarah Bell, and uh, just really well done. And people were were chipper. <laughs> they were. You guys did a good job. Even. <laughs> yeah, it was good. That was really good. And and thoughtful, interesting questions. Yeah. And I really liked hearing um, the interaction between the various councils, like asking each yeah. other questions and and that was good. I mean, the yeah, that was really great. The the ball fields down in Lolo to like the campgrounds up in Sealy, like it was yeah. just really great to hear all of that. Yeah, and the West Valley super fun stuff. I feel like it was really useful for us to hear what these people had to say. So. And I, I hope we get some invites on uh, community specific on community specific meetings. Do you yeah. want me to go ahead and just pick a, an evening in the middle of May sure. and schedule sure. yeah. it or yeah. And yeah. 6 or 6.30 still work OK for a time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think so. I'll just double check with you before I put an invite out that you don't have some other personal plans before I walk in a day, but. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah. And then I have a scheduling question. Is now an okay time to ask? Sure. Sure. Um, just related to the food policy advisory board mm -hmm. interviews. So we have nine interviews locked in already. We're waiting for four more people to respond. Um, Dave was just questioning if the commissioners really need to sit through the city interviews, given the fact that the city will be appointing their own members and the county will be appointing our own members. So I just wanted to run it by the three of you together. Um, I've invited you to all of the interviews and I just want to kind of get your feedback before the first one's tomorrow at 815 in the morning. So just so we're all kind of moving forward in the same plan. Sarah, wasn't there some issue that the city had that we were kind of helping them with by being yeah, part? So, of what, what was that? So basically the city doesn't have staff or time to um, manage the interview process. So I said I could help with it and provide the platform and coordinate schedules. Oh, I see. Great. So um, they thought we should do joint interviews to make it easier. But if if we don't need to do that, then I'm happy to still coordinate and schedule the interviews for the city. Um, just whatever you guys want to do. Well, that was really great of you to do that, to keep this process moving forward. I really appreciate that you would take that on. Yeah, if, likewise. If we, yeah, if we don't participate, do they have enough staff to make it go? Enough people uh, involved to do their, their, their interviews? So three city council members have are part of this interview committee. So it's uh -huh. uh, Murda, Heidi West, and Amber Cheryl. Okay. So they've all agreed to the times that we had, which I just Great. created the times around commissioner's availability because that's what I had to work off of. So they've been responding to the schedule invites. Um, I can follow up with the three of them and let them know that you won't be on the city interview calls. I just, uh, if we don't need to, I'm with Dave on this. If we don't need to, we could use that time for something else. Um, that's great. Okay. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. Maybe I'll just wrap around with an email to everyone who's a part of it and just kind of break it down a bit um, and change the schedule invites so that you're not confused as if you should or shouldn't be there. Yeah, thanks. And okay. given, given what's happened to our local food system and our food bank through COVID, I, I'm really excited that we could uh, get this group going. It would have been wonderful to have some of their suggestions over the past few weeks, even things just happened so quickly. Uh, but I'm really psyched that you can help make this happen, Sarah, and that a month from now we'll, we'll be in place. Yeah, we'll get it done. So. Thanks. Okay, I'll loop around with everyone via email. Okay, thank you. Thank you. you. Hey, I had a communications thing I just wanted to throw out is the, um, the Virtual City Club State of the Community Mm -hmm. is May 11th. It's a Monday. Just to give you a quick update on that, Ginny, Miriam, uh, Kelly, Webster, Peggy Kerr, and I had a call this week um, just kind of lining out the, the, the logistics of it, and it looks like it's going to be a, a kind of a webinar type platform that the University of Montana is going to provide and, and offer technical support for. Um, we're gonna we're still kind of developing the, the program a little bit josh i know you had already kind of worked up comments but i i am so flexible yeah i love how flexible you are and i would imagine that everyone would need to be because the comments i think the things that people are interested in hearing about might be a little bit different than they were a month ago. just throwing that out there um so i just wanted you to know that we're working on that and that um we're gonna kind of maybe line up some some questions for you to to answer it. So it'll be um, you, the mayor, and, and President Bodner, um, and kind of throw it out for, for discussion and then open it up to participants who I think have, have registered to participate in it. I'm not really sure how City Club's going to work it. It's kind of their kind of their deal. But I just wanted you to know that we're we're working on getting that figured Great. out for you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right, do we have any more COVID things we want to talk through? Cameron, do you have anything? Um, I don't think so. I had a couple questions to follow up maybe about um, like COVID expenses, if there's anyone around later today, um, but that is it on my end. Okay, 
Andrew, do you want to take those? Yeah, sure. Please, please Thank give you. me a call. I'd be happy to respond to any questions you have. Okay, awesome. Um, do you want me to just give you a call later? That'd be great. Uh, you can call me on my cell phone. It's 552-7760. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. If that's all we got, then that's all we got. All right. Thank. Are you guys doing the the Facebook Live housing? I think thing? that was happening already. Yeah, I was going to try to jump in on that. Oh my gosh, I I didn't even I, that one slipped past me. Sounds like a good thing too. Um. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you guys. All right. Thanks. Thanks. See y'all later. Bye. Thanks.